Uh, it's Angela from Democratic Services. Um, it's 10 o'clock. I'll just let you know as soon as I've got live um, confirmation that the live stream has started, which should be any moment. Yeah, the live stream is now um, going ahead. All right, thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this virtual meeting of Cornwall Council's Audit Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I will outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may choose to use their video. If the council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn for a short period to try to re-establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphone. It always helps. Um, if for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise you. Votes will be taken by by using the no, they won't. I'm reading from a, from a script. I got it wrong. Votes will be taken by by a roll call conducted by the by by, by, by Helen Snell and the result announced by Democratic Services. Where a member has declared a non-registrable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest, or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in the matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm, the procedure for today's meeting is that committee members who wish to speak on an item should indicate by putting an X in the chat box and members not on the committee uh, should do the same, but I will take them later on. Um, before we start today's business, I will ask the Democratic Services Officer to confirm members and officers' attendance. Over to you, please. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Helen Snell, Democratic Services. Good morning, everybody. I'm just going to call members' names and if you could all confirm, please, that you are present and state your electoral division. So, Councillor Harris. Present, Truro Trehaven. Thank you. And Councillor Ekinsmith. Present, uh, Councillor Brillaven. Thank you. And Councillor Kenny. Good morning, Joanna Kenny, Newquay Pentire. Thank you. And Councillor Lebroy. Present, Bewed. Thank you. And Councillor Biscoe. Uh, good morning, Brett Biscoe. Um, I represent the Biscoe and Division in Truro. Thank you. And Councillor Jordan. Yes, Barry Jordan, Tintagel Division. <coughs> Thank you. And Councillor Rushworth. Uh, present, uh, Stephen Rushworth, uh, Councillor for St Izzy and St Judy Division. Thank you. And Councillor Alvey. Councillor Martin Alvey representing FIOC and Plain Place Division and substituting for Councillor Desmond. Thank you. That's our audit committee um, councillor membership. We also have no, an agenda. Including myself, um, Councillor Wood. Oh, my apologies, Councillor Wood. You are on my list. Sorry. Yes, Councillor Wood, sorry. Good morning. That's all Thank right. You. Last but not least. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So that concludes the member list. We also have um, Councillor Ethorn Gibbons um, in attendance today. Could you confirm your electoral division, please? Good morning, one and all. Mike Ethorn Gibbons, Laddick, St Clement and St Erm. Thank you. So also in the meeting today, we have um, our audit committee co-optees who are Jeff Ring and Chris Batters. We also have from Grant Thornton, Geraldine Daly. Officers present today, um, we have Kate Canali, Sharon Hamilton, Rachel Rothero, Tracy Langley, Mel O'Sullivan, Holly Sykes, Gary Walton, Jason Kahn, Helen Charlesworth May, Jason Pungilly, Leah Musto Shinton, Alex Polak, and Christopher Chandler, and myself, and our meeting producer, Angela Saunders.
Then for our um, first item on the agenda, we have from CoreServe, Peter Andrew, Kath Robinson and Phil Morston. From Trevath, we have Adam Ronaldson. And from the Wave Hub, we have Steve Jeremy and Jeanette Radcliffe. Have you finished? That concludes, yes, thank you. <laughs> Quite enough people, thank you. Um, OK, if we can carry on down the agenda, just to be clear, we will take item nine, core serve annual shareholder report, which will also pick up Trevet and Wave Hub after item three, because that will that will let um, at least some of the vast cast of thousands sitting out sitting in the meeting leave, leave rather than sitting through um, a long meeting saying nothing. So if we move on to item two, declarations of interest. Are there any decla declarations of interest, please? I hear nothing. I take it that there are no declarations of interest. Excuse Item me. three, Excuse the me. minutes of the meeting held on 25th of June 2020, purely for accuracy. Um, I'll go through them just to give you a chance to raise points. Page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight. Thank you. Any point? Sorry. Do, may, I, may I have a, Helen Snell, you have your hands up, sorry. Sorry to interrupt Councillor Harris, if we could just confirm um, the apologies. Yes, we have apologies from Councillor Desmond, for whom Councillor Council Alvey is substituting. Thank you. If I can go, thank you. If I can go back to the minutes, may I have a, a proposal to, to, to approve the minutes, please? Joanna Kenny, thank you. And a second, uh, Councillor Jordan. Um, if you please signify, well, sorry, would you like to call the roll on this, Helen? Do it properly. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Yes, Helen Snell, Democratic Services. For, if I could now do a roll call for voting um, for the minutes, please. And if you could just let me know if you're for, against or abstaining. So, Councillor Harris. For. Thank you. Councillor Alvey. Abstain, not present. Councillor Eckensmith. For. Councillor Kenny. For. Councillor Lebroy. For. Councillor Bisco. For. Councillor Wood. For. Councillor Jordan. For. And Councillor Rushworth. Abstain, not present. Thank you. The recommendation is approved, Councillor Harris. Thank you. If then we can move on to item nine, course of annual shareholder report. Uh, and I think Tracy Langley wants to start on this by introducing the item. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I was going to do just a bit of an overview from the uh, shareholder perspective, um, just to put uh, all of the reporting that we're having today in a bit of context. Um, so this is the sh third share annual shareholder report, uh, which is being presented to the audit committee for the CoreServe group. Uh, and the report reviews the delivery against the cabinet approved CoreServe group business plan and covers 12 month period from the 1st of April 2019 to the 31st of March 2020. The annual shareholder report is being jointly presented to, to you today um, by council and core serve officers uh, and the report reflects the significant time and effort by the core serve exec team uh, and the supporting officers working with the council officers to continue to develop strong governance arrangements and to ensure transparency of information on the performance of the core serve group. Um, the report provides an overview of strategic and operational activity, financial highlights, corporate social responsibility, people, health and safety and governance information. The financial return from the core serve group to the council uh, to Cornwall Council for, ninth, for the year 2019-20 period was 5.1 million against a target of 5.9 million. Prior to the coronavirus crisis, the business was forecasting to achieve its targets. However, it was adversely impacted by the collapse of Flybe and COVID-19 impacts 
on the aviation sector and on highways operations in the last weeks of March. These issues have also had an impact on the timing of the sign off of the financial statements. Call server executives are here today and will provide you an update of the latest position with regards to the financial statements. The committee is receiving the annual shareholder report and being asked to provide comment ahead of formal approval by the shareholder representative on behalf of the council as the shareholder. To promote transparency, the financial statements for Wave Hub Limited and the Treveth Group are also provided for information. There is no annual shareholder report for these entities this year, but these will be presented for the year 2020-21 uh, and onwards. This is in line with the council-owned entity framework approved by full council in January this year. The Treveth Annual Shareholder Report will be presented to audit committee following the full year of activity and will show progress against the detailed one year Trebeth business plan approved by our cabinet um, in March 2020. Uh, 2020. Um, the focus for Wave Hub has been around strengthening the board and developing a strategy for its future. Cabinet approved that steps could be taken to divest the Wave Hub assets as part of its approval of the Wave Hub business plan in March 2020. Wavehub and Trebeth board executives are available today to respond to any questions on the financial statements presented. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Kath Robinson, who's Group Managing Director and the Group Finance Director, uh, Phil Morstan. Uh, and I do believe that um, Peter is here today, who's the Chairman, uh, who will take us through some of the detail and the information presented to you today. Thank you, Chairman. That's the end. Thank you. Kath Robinson, if you want to carry on, if you want to start. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to introduce the annual shareholder report, uh, which, as Tracy has uh, said, looks back over the last year. Uh, we had a strong financial year in terms of our return to the Council, and that is despite a significant change in the planned capital expenditure from Cornwall Council to Cornwall for cap major capital schemes, a variation of 15 million. Um, and were it for not the COVID crisis at the end of March and the flyby demise, it is very likely that we would have actually hit our target. Uh, so I think that was a po positive in terms of our financials. Um, Phil Morstan, our FD, will go into much more detail around our finances shortly. Um, our strategy of winning more external work has been successful over the last year with a growth of over £10 million for Cormac. Um, this included work for Highways England and two other councils. We have been successful on getting onto the Devon framework, the Devon County Council framework and Torbay Council frameworks. Um, and the success last year um, in terms of the jobs that we have done from Devon has meant that last year where they gave us sort of a trial amount of work of around half a million uh, to date this year the order book has been around two million just alone from Devon and Torbay has extended their maintenance contract. We've also won um, a H year contract uh, to support city bus. Uh, they are, as you will be aware, they are running the buses in Cornwall now. Uh, we are their supplier for all their fleet maintenance, the cleaning of their buses, and also storage uh, of and um, parking of, of their, their buses. And these have all been competitively won. We've also continued to work on our environment strategy uh, in line with the council. Uh, promises um, in terms of their commitment to climate change and shortly we'll be going live with our, with our first ever biomethane gas vehicle in a partnership with Benemans. Uh, this means that uh, some of our smaller vehicles will be running off gas instead of diesel. Uh, that project has also led to uh, work with the county farms where the capture of the methane um, th through Benemans is taking place. So it's a good circular project for both the council, a local innovative firm and the course serve group. We're also analysing our routes and introducing electronic vehicles across the fleet uh, where appropriate and when they come up for renewal. 
In terms of our fa facilities management, uh, we have now introduced eco-friendly cleaning solutions uh, based on chemical-free stabilised ozone water cleaning solutions. This eliminates chemicals and also single-use plastics. Um, and it's also compliant and deals with COVID. And we have found that we're getting new contracts arising through this innovation, particularly around schools, children's centres, where the cleaning regimes need to be robust, but they also need to be safe for the client. So that's very positive. Um, as members will be aware, we've worked with the commissioner as well in terms of uh, looking at how we allow wildflowers across Cornwall to thrive, to grow and seed, to help pollinators and wildlife while still maintaining safety cuts for visibility. In terms of health and safety, uh, we had an independent audit over the last year and that came out with substantial assurance that we have the right processes in place, the right practices, the right culture. This is a continued improvement journey for us and we're doing a lot of work uh, across all of our companies and on uh, the uh, right down with our workers, making sure that uh, they know what the regulations are, but also that they are comfortable that they can report incidents through our near miss reporting tool, which is an easy online easy to use on their phones so that they can tell us if they're concerned about anything. We continue to have BSI uh, come in and do six monthly audits that also look across the piece in terms of health and safety. This is a rigorous approach which picks up on any non-conformities and then we have time to put those right. In terms of customer satisfaction, I think we've seen some good improvements in this area. Members will be aware that the resident survey process that the council run has seen a 13% increase in satisfaction around road maintenance. Uh, we believe this is very much because of the online reporting in terms of potholes and defects that we have now in place where members of the public can track their issues and see when they're resolved um, and also the work that we've been doing with the parishes, the liaison with the clerks, making it much uh, clearer when we will be coming and getting them involved in the planning of work. Also parks and open spaces have seen an increase as well of around 7%. Our care uh, company has 100% satisfaction from clients. Each client has a survey to complete once uh, their sort of package has ended and 89% of them are saying they're able to do more for themselves after we've left and feel more confident to live independent. In terms of COVID, I think this is where uh, really the, the group has come uh, to the fore and worked very carefully with Cornwall Council uh, for the people of Cornwall um, and I think we've had exceptional commitment from our staff who have actually volunteered and helped across the whole group um, and, and really stepped up. We have um, put live three discharge lounges uh, based in hotels working carefully with adult social care which has made a real difference uh, to how the care system and NHS system in Cornwall coped with the crisis. We have delivered 4,500 additional hours of care during the peak of the crisis and we set up a bank of care staff that could actually then be used to step in where care, private care homes were having difficulties because of maybe staff self-isolating or ill and that has really helped the resilience across Cornwall. Um, our drivers, we've had a hundred drivers delivering PPE, collecting it and distributing it across Cornwall with over a million and a half items delivered by us. Um, we've also obviously ho hosted a temporary morgue at the airport and created additional uh, grave capacity during the peak of the crisis. 
I think this really demonstrated the partnership working between us, the council, um, and also the NHS. And one of the things I would like to say is a big thank you to the CCIT service. Uh, their support has been great during this time, getting people up working at home very quickly and with teams which we all now rely on so much. And um, so I think that's a bit of a highlight over uh, the, the last year, but I would just like to hand over to Phil now, who can go into much more detail on the financial elements. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. everybody. Um, my name is Phil Morstan. Um, I'm the Group Finance Director for Corso Group. Um, I'd just like to start off by giving a bit of an overview of the group and its cash return performance for the 1920 period. Um, I'd just like to start off saying that the group has a broad range of businesses spanning from kind of commercial services in highways and FM to not-for-profit organisations such as CDC um, and the airport. Um, about 60% of our revenues fall into categories that I would kind of class as commercial. Um, these are the kind of Cormac solutions, Cormac contracting businesses that deliver um, the civil engineering, fleet, workshops, facilities, maintenance part of the business. Um, about 40% of our revenues are social value, not-for-profit, subsidised elements. Um, these include Cornwall Housing, Cornwall Airport and Cornwall Development Company. And obviously the mix of those sort of businesses are reflected in our financial um, performance today. Um, I'd like to just touch on the profit elements for the group generate very strong returns for the shareholder. Um, on an operating profit basis before interest and rebates, um, the CSL divisions and CCL divisions develop £4.9 million of operating profit on a 4.7 cent return. Um, it's an extremely strong return um, for the industry they're in. Um, this profit generates the majority of the cash return to Cornwall Council um, and supports the other loss making elements of the group, such as the airport, um, which um, covers off the subsidy for the airport each year, which we'd utilise for kind of tax and group relief. Um, I'd just like to start off by talking about the cash return for last year. Um, as Tracy kind of intimated at the beginning, um, up until February, we were forecasting to hit our £5.9 million cash return for this for last year. Uh, it was extremely frustrating, obviously, for COVID to hit and us not to hit that element. Um, this was a target before kind of COVID hit. Um, in addition to the £5 million cash return, the group also covered off the Cal subsidy of £1.6 million which doesn't form part of that £5.9 million cash return, but is obviously a, a benefit for Cornwall Council because that used to be paid for by um, Cornwall Council yourselves. And obviously we utilise that as group tax relief. Um, our cash return is made up of a number of elements. Um, those are documented on page 37 of the annual shareholder report. Um, the group itself is structured to return cash to the council through a number of different financial routes. Um, and as to be tr as tax efficient as possible when returning those funds. Um, those payments include interest payments on our debt, um, rebates for work supplied to Cornwall Hi Cormac Highways, um, and obviously the group absorbing the Cal, um, the Cal loss. Dividends are effectively the last payment we make out after all of those have been netted off from your profits and after you've cut off the tax for your business. Um, just to give a bit of further clarity on how the cash return is made up. so. Um, interest from loans to the group. So this amounted to just under 1.1 million for 1920. Um, this year, the group increased its loan funding by 11.1 million to fund the transfer of 2,600 assets. Um, this took the total debt for the group to 23 million. Um, these loans have interest rates ranging from 4.5 to 5.7 percent. Um, the group does not have any equity investment um, at the moment, and all of our capital funding to date comes via debt. Um, this DAC carries it an interest return back to CC where um, equity funding would normally be returned as dividend if that were not the case. Um, this obviously has a tax benefit to CC. Um, the group also pays a rebate for work supplied to um, Cormac Solutions by CC. Um, last year that amounted to 1.2 million um, going back to CC. CHL also took a reduced management fee of 874k for the year which effectively transferred funds back. Um, and then finally, we had dividends from, from the group of 1.98 million, primarily from Cormac Solutions, which is where most of our dividends are currently funded from. Um, but also that does include 930k of historical via sales receipts, 
um, 700k of which had already been paid as part of the original sale. Um, so overall, the group will have delivered a cash return of 5.1 million versus a target of 5.9, plus we will have absorbed the 1.6 million pound subsidy um, for the Cal Airport. Um, frustratingly, up until February 2020, we were forecasting to deliver the 5.9. However, with the impact of COVID, um, we did see the increased loss at Cal increase from 1.1 to 1.6. Um, that in itself was disappointing. That would have been, I think, the sixth year in a row that Cal would have seen its subsidy reduced um, as it continued to grow and was expecting to hit half a million passengers last year. Um, and again, just for transparency, the main reason for that was for bad debt provisions put aside for um, the, the collapse of Flybe and the loss of revenue in the last two weeks um, of March when the airport terminal closed down. Um, and we also saw a minor impact in kind of Cormac highways, which also immaterial impacted the, uh, the cash return in the last few weeks. Um, I'll just touch on a few of the kind of key financial highlights, if I may. Um, so two new entities joined the group this year. Um, Cormac Contracting Limited moved across into the group. Um, you'll have noticed in the accounts that this carries with it an exceptional adjustment of 938k. Um, so when the company joined the group, it carried with it um, historical losses of 938k um, and a notional value of a pound was given to the company. So the, the goodwill difference between those historical losses and the notional value was written off this year. Um, that was an accounting adjustment. It didn't um, protract us from any of our cash return ability this year. Uh, it's a one off adjustment that won't be repeated in future years. Um, CoreServe Property also joined the company this year. Um, th this is the first year of its um, two year phase in delivering 250 houses as part of the PRA project. Um, this project is funded by a mixture of grant equity and debt. Um, the first element of this is grant funding that we're utilising and so far we've purchased £3.9 million pounds of houses. Um, that, that grant revenue is recognised as revenue in the P&L um, and is recognised as profit on the bottom line and I'll touch on that in a bit more in a, in a second. Um, the group also purchased 2,600 assets from Cornwall Housing. So we are now as a group um, responsible for purchasing and maintaining our own asset base. Um, and the other material impact really is the pension pass through was agreed with Cornwall Council. Um, this effectively removed 10.3 million pounds of pension liability from the balance sheets of CDC and Cal. Um, just for note, the, the group continues to obviously pay a variable pension contribution, which is reviewed every three years as part of the LTPS. Um, overall revenue for the group was down 7 cents to 151 million. Uh, as Kath kind of alluded to, this was primarily related to Cormac Highways um, due to delayed capital works and reduced servicing program. Um, I will say the business responded extremely positive to this. We, we kind of identified earlier on the year that this was going to be a risk. Um, and we set about put in place a, a mitigation plan to try and um, a, try and close this gap. Obviously, for such a large level of revenue drop in our commercial entity, that obviously has a fairly significant risk for us in terms of dividends return. Um, but I was I was extremely pleased to say that up until February we were we were going to achieve that position, and the business responded extremely positively to that. Um, overall, the group um, operating profit increased from 1.4 million to 3.6. Um, that 3.6 million has already identified, kind of um, included a number of exceptional items. So, so that 3.6 million in includes 3.9 million of operating profit for Corsair property relating to the PRA project. Um, it also includes a write down for CCL of 0.9 million. Um, but also within there, we had the increase in the cow loss, which we weren't expecting at, at the very last minute, going from 1.1 million to 1.6. So that put another half a million on there. Um, and also CHL had a, uh, a loss for the year of 1.7 million. Um, that was planned as per the business plan um, and included 0.9 million pound of contribution back to CC through reduced management fee and investment in their transformation plan. Um, in this financial year, we expect CCHL to return back to a net positive position. Um, I, I think overall it was an extremely positive year financially given some of the challenges we faced. Um, and in the, in the kind of um, operational commercial elements of the company, they generated extremely strong returns, as already highlighted around 4.9 million to 4.7 million pound um, return. Um, in terms of the balance sheet, there were kind of two main impacts on the balance sheet really that, that had the, the change. 
Um, we saw our net, our asset position, net asset position increase from a, a negative 58k to 13 million this year. That was primarily due to um, fixed assets increasing from 16 to 23 million. Majority of that related to the PRA project and the new HR and payroll system and some investment in Cormac plants. Um, the other material change to that was the pension pass through um, that removed kind of 10 million pound from the balance sheet. A um, couple of other notable points I just want to highlight to you as part of this as well. Um, the group purchased over two and a half million pounds of services from Cornwall Council um, and 80 million pounds from local suppliers. Um, the majority of those are kind of small SME suppliers as well. Um, the group utilised the cow losses of 1.6 million to offset corporation tax, saving an estimated 300k. Um, and positively as well, the group um, implemented its new HR and payroll system um, in, in time and, and went live kind of April this year. So that was that was an extremely positive position. Um, looking forward, um, just to give you a bit of an update in terms of where we are, I mean, Q1, as you would expect, has been a difficult trading position. Um, the majority of our commercial businesses ceased non-essential works during April and May. Um, this potentially will have an, an impact on the full year results. However, the business is formalising a recovery plan and will be looking to continue to grow its external business. Um, to try and mitigate these impacts as much as possible. Um, obviously, for us during that period, we've seen a, a significant reduction in our kind of revenue during the first quarter, um, and the business has made use of the job retention scheme um, from the government, and to date has claimed £3.2 million to support the business. Um, Cornwall Airport, as you can imagine, has been significantly impacted by the uncertainty and disruption of the aviation market. Um, the terminal was closed until July and obviously passenger numbers this year we expect to remain um, in, in the lower end of our forecast. Um, we sadly had to restructure with some job losses expected um, given the lower level of footfall. Um, but we are starting to see some levels of normality returning um, and positively some flights where they haven't been interrupted by um, lockdowns um, have, have actually been higher than we originally anticipated in some areas. Um, other than that, the majority of the elements of the business are now back up to full kind of operational capacity. Um, P3 was, was a reasonably strong result for us, I have to say. Um, during quarter one this year, like many businesses in the UK, we, we return the majority of our cash back to the council um, after our profits, so we don't carry a huge amount of cash reserves. Um, the business did face some kind of challenging times during Q1 around liquidity. Um, as you can well expect, expect during normal kind of trading conditions, the model we run with kind of debt levels and returning all of our profits back to CC um, is not normally an issue. But however, when you have disrupted trading um, and impacts on your cash flow, that obviously puts us in a bit of a challenging position. Um, the, the group did um, get access to additional liquidity during this period from the council. Um, but I'm pleased to say as of yet, we haven't utilised any of that and we've managed to um, utilise what we currently have and maintain our position. Um, we're starting to see that cash position now return back to a normalish levels and assuming we don't have any further disruption to trading, um, I'm very much hoping that we won't need to utilise any of those additional liquidity um, options given to us. So that's a, that's a real positive for us and I think um, shows hopefully how well the business has responded during this crisis. Um, quick update on the financial statements, so apologies for not getting them um, to you. Um, the, the subsidiary companies, All Bar, Cal and the Course of Group have all been signed off by the boards. Um, so again, I'd like to recognise the, the um, huge amount of effort that um, our auditors and the financial teams have put in in doing this. Um, it was an incredibly challenging time migrating and doing an audit during what is probably the worst time for a financial team, if I'm being honest. Um, right smack bang on your year, year end. Um, but the business has done extremely well to do that and, and the, all of those accounts now are pretty much ready to go. Um, obviously with the exception of Cal and CoreServe Group for, um, for reasons noted previously. So I think that that's my overview for the group of companies. Uh, I think Kath and I are now happy to take questions. Right, thank you. What I'd like to do is take is take questions on the, the course of group and then we'll move on to Trebeth and Wave Hub separately rather than running it all together. So questions please. Um, Councillor Kenny first. Well thank you both for a very um, 
excellent report and a very interesting report and under the circumstances quite optimistic. Uh, my, my questions are actually fairly trivial. Um, going to the, 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 the losses that you can set against tax, is there any limit? I mean, I assume that Carol is going to, uh, actually I call it can, put Nuki in it, but is there any um, uh, sort of limits to, if the, if the loss gets bigger, can we still claim more and more uh, against, against the profits of the company of any? Um, a few minor questions on what Kath was saying. I was very interested in the in the uh, cleaning and how you were using uh, more climate friendly stuff. Is, that, is it more expensive to buy that sort of thing or is it the same sort of price and you're sort of making your returns from other ways? Um, I, I was, a fairly uh, trivial question on how you were generating the methane in that circular project. Is it cows or is it silage or what? And um, I suppose the most serious thing for me as a local councillor is um, we appreciate the new policy on the verges and that is getting very mixed returns from our residents. But is the same policy being, being followed in the street cutting because we are getting our normal complaints now that the streets are getting overgrown and I'm wondering whether there is a policy and whether you do the street cutting and whether there is a similar policy to let the, the wildflowers um, grow because that is not popular locally. Hey, Councillor Kenny, I'll, I'll just answer the question on the cow um, loss position. Um, obviously, you know, I have to consider also the, the wider group in, in that position as well in terms of the losses, but in principle, um, there shouldn't be an issue in terms of absorbing additional losses into into the group for tax relief, but that's not to say that the business can afford to do that, if you understand what I mean. Kath, can you, can you respond to the other questions? I am just slightly bothered we're straying away from audit committee type areas to, to, to other areas, but perhaps you can just We're happy to take them offline and if, that, if, if that's what you prefer, because they were fairly trivial questions. Kath, I think you just respond quickly, but if the rest of us... Yeah, can I'll, I'll respond quickly. Thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of cleaning, um, it requires a bit of investment in terms of equipment at the start, in terms of being able to um, produce the product um, on on our own premises. But actually, as it the pre predominantly, it is water based. So ultimately, it will be cheaper. So it was an initial investment, but it's still within all of our prices. And ultimately, it will lead to better margins. And the methane, yes, it is cows. Um, and we're working with the council and particularly the county farms tenants. Um, and, and, and it's a circular partnership where where the methane is is uh, collected from from the from the produce off produce of the cows. <laughs> I won't say obviously you know what I mean. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think next Councillor Bisco. Chairman, good morning. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, Kath, if I may, um, uh, in the. Um, but paragraph 1.9 in the council's report of, of page 164, we're talking about um, uh, Cornwall Airport Limited. Um, uh, I note that it says that the council has provided, sorry, the, the group has stated that it is unable to fund the increase in costs. The council has provided short term supplier relief um, until the end of July, whilst negotiations take place with the Department of Transport. At the time of writing 1.10, these negotiations are ongoing and the accounts are not signed for Carl and Corso. I just wondered if we have any news, because here we are on the last day of July, about those negotiations and what you consider in light of either their conclusion or the way they're going, uh, how you think that um, uh, we will be placed in terms of maintaining a, an operation at the airport. It's, it's quite clear that for, certainly from a, a business perspective, maintaining the airport is, is regarded as, as, as essential. Um, 
other perspectives don't quite see it like that uh, but but let's let's take the business perspective and so therefore if that is the case and we are in an economic recovery mode then there surely is a need to be maintaining the airport so what provisions do you consider assuming that the department of transport negotiations are not as successful as we hope uh, right. what provisions do you think we can take to actually deal with that can i can i just jump in here because i think tracy langley's got a hand up um, oh, tracy Tracy, do you want to comment on this? Because I know there's a degree of sensitivity on this, and we and if you to get a, a lot a lot of detail, Councillor Bisco, we might need to go into part two. So I don't know whether you would prefer to take this offline rather than going to part two. But, but the, the point is, is that in the public report, this 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 matter is 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 talked about, but there is no conclusion to it, and it is a question which, because it's been published in the public report, will be being asked. This is particularly you know, sensitive area. I mean, I do accept that these are matters to do with current performance rather than the performance 1920, um, but they have materialised in the council's and the shareholders' report, so I assume that they must have a relevance. Ms Langley, do you want to comment? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, so these are matter of uh, commercial sensitivity, uh, and I would ask that uh, it, uh, should Councillor Biscoe's uh, questions want to be answered, we do that in either a private session um, or we take it offline and do it outside of the outside of the committee. Well, my view is, Chairman, that, that, that this should be a matter which is of, of, of interest to the committee. And so therefore, I think we should proceed. But I'm perfectly happy to take it below the line if that's the case. I'm uh, sorry, uh, Councillor Fisco, I'm going to exercise my position as Chairman. I, I, I think this is, um, from, from what I can see as an outsider looking in, this is incredibly sensitive. Um, and I would I would rather we took it offline. I, I understand where your question is coming from. I understand your concern and it's entirely valid. And as a regular user of the airport, I'm equally as worried, but I would rather go offline completely. Thank you. Uh, well, in that case, can I say that the two paragraphs should not have appeared in the council's report? That's, your comment is noted. Uh, before I before I conclude with my remarks, could I please thank uh, CoreServe and Cormac for their extremely expeditious work in getting Boscoan Street into a usable state uh, as early uh, in the lockdown process as they were able to manage to do. Uh, it's proved extremely helpful to the town uh, and to all the people who use it. I'm very grateful to them for that. I'll join you in those thanks. Right, next we have, I think in, 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 the, in the order of hands going up, it, it, was, it was Chris Butters who was next. Chris. Thank you. Um, what, one question, really, which probably has a, uh, a, a long answer, so answer it as, as, as briefly as, as you like. Um, the, the structure of the council and uh, core serve is a bit of a virtuous circle because the more money the council pays to core serve, the more profit it can make and the more money it can claim as a success when it pays it back to the council. So two questions really. One is to what extent do you monitor, report and get measured against the external works where you can earn genuine profit and how much of that gets paid back to the council? And secondly, um, to what extent do you benchmark your own cost structures and pricing such against uh, market uh, companies, so uh, third parties, to ensure that the council is genuinely getting value for money and therefore that the, um, the, the single measure of success that you report, being the amount of money referred back to the council, is actually a valid criteria of success. Thank you. Thank you. Catherine Robinson, I think. Yeah, th thank you, Chris, for that. Uh, yes, th th these are very important questions, actually, and I think they're raised quite a lot. Um, ultimately, it is the council sh that should be uh, checking that we deliver value for money for them. Um, as, as well as a profit return um, and they have various systems in place to check that. So 
when we get awarded work, if, it, if it's through a direct award process, that they actually look at benchmarking data then. If we are looking at a specific capital scheme, uh, the council employs independent cost consultants to make sure that we are in line with the market. And that is a very robust process that happens for any significant uh, capital scheme. Um, as well as that, a, about 18 months ago, the council employed an independent consultant, WSP, to actually look at Cormac um, in particular uh, to see if the prices were in line with the market and they did that. We have what is called the basic maintenance contract, which is a long term contract that has a schedule of rates in it. They used our schedule of rates and compared that to four other comparator uh, cases, um, in particular one of those with Devon County Council and the Scansa contract. And uh, their conclusion was that in all four comparative cases assessed, Cormac rates were favourable and they were judged to have good performance and delivering the right level of quality. So that was an independent assessment um, actually commissioned by Cormac, uh, sorry, by the council to look at Cormac. In terms of facilities management, uh, none of that work has come through a direct award. We have won that through an open tender process in the first instant. So I think the council can have confidence that they've got the processes in place to check that actually, as well as returning profit, we um, are actually providing value for money and our prices are comparable to the market. We've also um, benchmarked um, our back office uh, costs in terms of finance, in terms of HR, in terms of health and safety. And with finance and HR, we are below uh, national benchmarks in terms of cost. Um, health and safety, we are on the national average um, and I'm comfortable with those. I wouldn't want to be significant significantly below in terms of health and safety because I think that's really important for the group of companies. Thank you, Catherine. Um, in terms of monitoring and reporting, um, we have um, monthly commissioner reporting, um, which involves uh, all of our companies reporting to the commissioners and sitting alongside the commissioners is the council's commercial services team. Um, and they can, at any point, they can uh, raise issues on performance um, or if there's particular schemes and price and ask for more information. So ho hopefully that gives you uh, some confidence there. All right, thank you. I don't know whether Tracy Langley you want to comment just very briefly from the council side on, on, on this question. Um, happy to chair, but I, I don't think I need to other than uh, because uh, Kath has outlined most of it anyway. Uh, and just to reassure you that, um, that in terms of ensuring that value, we get value for money from the group of companies in terms of the direct award, award work, um, it, it's quite rigorous. Uh, and I am satisfied that uh, the amount of rigour that we put around that it, it gives us assurance that, that, um, that we are getting that value for money. Thank you. Okay. Next question, Councillor Rushworth, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've just got a few questions and they're um, quite similar on the same theme that, that Chris has just brought up. Um, when you do your benchmarking, is that done against other authorities spending or is it done against uh, in comparison to commercial um, um, tendering that, uh, that comes in? Uh, Kath mentioned that we've had a £12 million shortfall from uh, from income expected by the council, um, that must be uh, a risk that could go on for we don't know how long, but in these difficult times, one has to take it into account. But I'm pleased to say that, she's a, um, that as a group you've uh, accepted that could be a problem and you, you've gone into more commercial tendering. Uh, a, a figure of 60% of commercial trade uh, relating to uh, uh, course of business um, 
was I was identified. How much of that is non-council, um, uh, you know, just businesses outside of, of the Cornwall Council's control? Uh, and have you had a, a rise in that percentage? And also, could you say that when you are going out to the to the to the private sector market, are you having to be far more competitive? And and if so, um, is that going to impact on on uh, on the profitability of the company? So that's where I'm coming from. Thank you. Sorry, Kath, do you want Thank to respond? Yes, yeah. yeah, sorry, I think there's a delay on my my thing. Yes, thank you, uh, Councillor um, Rushworth. Um, in terms of um, benchmarking, um, it, it's whatever is relevant at that point in time. So when the council was looking at the basic maintenance contracts and whether we provided value for money, uh, they um, looked at different council contracts with private sector suppliers. So, for instance, Devon County Council has SCANSA do their basic maintenance contract. The rates from that contract were compared to Cormac. In terms of the cost consultants, they would be looking um, directly at uh, commercial organisations in the same market as us. So ultimately, it's it's all um, comparing us with other commercial entities. Um, in terms of um, the pipeline, uh, delays in the pipeline of work that comes forward to Cormac and any of our other businesses, uh, we have recognised this is an issue and so have the Council um, and we are working together to try and get much more accurate forecasts to feed into the business plans in, in the future. Um, Tracy is doing great work with her team um, and recently had a, a significant meeting with lots of different partners to discuss that, how we might improve and join up so that we can push forward with uh, delivery for Cornwall. Um, in terms of the private sector work, uh, that's for a di um, different um, entities. So some of them will be purely other third party organisations, commercial uh, entities. Some of them may be house developers or, or that whatever it could be. Uh, we, we, we will do work, um, obviously, but based, we will do due, due diligence first, but we will work with private uh, sector companies. Uh, but also um, where we're seeing um, particular growth is with other councils um, in the southwest. So I mentioned uh, Devon County Council and also Tor Bay where we can see the work that Cormac does there, it's growing in scale and that's in line with our strategy really. Um, that's positive um, because we can then, the profit element that we work, that we achieve through those um, uh, routes actually gets returned back to Cornwall. So it's, it's, a, it's a win win there. Um, uh, in terms of the uh, individual jobs, they're all sort of priced individually, um, but they wouldn't be significantly different from what we would be uh, charging uh, to Cornwall Council. It's not, we don't sort of charge a different rate for Cornwall Council work compared to Devon, uh, so you can be reassured there. Right, thank you. Can I come uh, back just for one quick? Um, on that, thank you, Chair. Um, Kath, um, you mentioned uh, you've done your benchmarking. Have you ever done any benchmarking regarding what a private sector contractor would charge a, a private company uh, as to whether or not uh, there is a difference between what's happening in the private sector and what's happening between private sector contractors and the council? Um, a lot of the benchmarking in that area is done by the cost consultants that are employed by the council, um, particularly MACE. 
Um, I, if I'm honest, I don't know if they are comparing. I think they're comparing them to the general market, but I think we would need that confirmed um, by commercial services unless uh, uh, anybody, uh, Tracy, knows the detail behind that now. If not, we can get back to you. Perhaps you can, perhaps you can do that off, <coughs> off, off, offline. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just, I was going to say, just to expand on that point, um, yeah, obviously market data is also incredibly difficult to get hold of in certain industries and, and to get equivalent comparative data. But where we do, um, especially certainly FM and, and, and markets and things like that, um, we do do our own internal comparisons just to make sure that we're aligned with the market and to understand where and why, if we don't want a contract, for example, um, where that position sits. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Councillor Lebroy is next, please. Thank you, Chair. I, I'm, I'm afraid what I'm going to say is probably pertinent to several items on this agenda. But to have 20 minutes time from officers and then probably a fairly constrained 15 to 20 minutes time uh, from for questions from members, in my honest opinion, just doesn't do this justice at all. Um, uh, and I really feel that this to properly understand uh, this report and to and to actually be in a position to give genuinely constructive comment as required in recommendation one, we really need to have the opportunity to have some sort of informal questioning time where we can have a, a frank exchange with officers and ask some of these questions that perhaps as Councillor Bisco brought forward might not be uh, pertinent or appropriate for the public domain. And it appears to me that some quite complicated financial co-working co and co-support going on within the group. And I, for one, would like to be in a position to ask some quite searching questions regarding that, that I don't feel would be appropriate right now. Uh, and I think that in the future, and who knows if you're the chairman again this time next year, uh, Councillor Harris, but if you are, I'd like to think that, that perhaps instead of bringing this report straight to a committee meeting, that we can actually try to get some officer time and perhaps have one or even perhaps two sessions where we can um, tease some meat off the bones and properly understands what's, go what's going on in order to provide that genuinely constructive comment uh, that seems to be required in, uh, in recommendation number one. But I can probably say exactly the same thing for several other items on this agenda. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, mean, I think this, this is one of the problems of the audit committee that we could, that we could spend four hours on every agenda item. Um, I think it, if, I, if I can be frank, I, I, overall, I, I agree with, you, with, 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 you, with your comments. What we have to be very conscious of is, is the interplay between customer scrutiny that also looks at Corsa and ourselves. But I'd be quite happy to have a discussion with you and probably Councillor Ethorne Gibbons and Tracy about how we get this better going forward. But I do take your point, there is a lot of detail in here, but I think we have to be just, just get the balance between what customer scrutiny look at and what audit look at. But it's a very good point, thank you. Um, Councillor Bisco, you have your hand up again briefly. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm sorry to come back a second time. Uh, but I, I, um, I did have a second question, if I may. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to Corsa for uh, providing a practical example of how the circular economy can work. Uh, it seems to be an ethereal principle, which um, I, I, I'm very glad to see some tangible benefit from. I just, in, in terms of the question, though, that the, the example that Kath gave of, of methane uh, powered vehicles being derived from county farms herds, which is all to the good, I have to say, I'm just wondering the extent to which the principle of circular economics needs to be constrained, con, 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 confined within the overall corporate entity of Cornwall Council and whether actually there's not partnerships that could be gained that would benefit the economy, which is part of our general duty, uh, you know, objective uh, by looking at partnerships with other um, uh, generators of methane. Um, uh, I mean, there, there are several um, groups uh, in Cornwall which, which are sustaining, for instance, the dairy industry, which is a big producer of methane, um, as well as a big creamery up in North Cornwall, which was publicly 
supported by Objective One when we raised it, and it's a very successful business. And and these these are actually you know one the, these are backbone companies in our agricultural industry. And I would have thought that there was great benefit if we're thinking about moving to methane-based vehicles in extending the reach of our partnership outside of the corporate entity of Cornwall Council and actually using our purchasing power and our environmental policies to help to sustain the local economy as well. And I'd be very interested to hear your comment on whether that would be something that you would be attempting to undertake in the future. Thank you, Chairman. Jeff Robinson. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Bert. Um, the partnership is with Benhamans and they are a local firm, a local private firm. So they they won't be just selling to, to uh, the CoreServe group. They will be looking to develop this and to sell it to, to other companies within Cornwall and beyond. Uh, we're very much in at the, the ground with them. Um, and have helped them, as has the council, in terms of giving them a source. But I think we are all hoping that from this uh, pilot, really, that actually it will grow into a business across Cornwall uh, and beyond for them. Yes, um, I'm, I was thinking about the source of the methane more than anything else, and that being able to support, uh, you know, Cornish groups like Rodders, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, Miss Langley, you have your hand up. Is that a past issue or a current issue? This issue, Chair. Please carry on. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, um, just um, for Councillor Biscoe's, uh, just a, a leading on from Councillor Biscoe's comment, uh, and I think um, councillors will know that um, Cornwall Council, in particular, and uh, and therefore uh, some of its entities, are working really hard to make sure that our um, our future procurement rules allow us to do more work with our local suppliers in in every in every reach, so that um, so that we keep more of our Cornwall Council money in Cornwall, um, and we are working to uh, develop a new set of uh, procurement rules that allow us to do that within within, of course, uh, compliant guidelines. Thank you. If we get into procurement in this meeting, we will never finish. Um, if there's nothing more on, 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 on this, what I would like to do is move on, I think probably to Wave Hub next, please. I'm not chosen to present on that. Uh, I'm able to, um, yes. if you're happy, Councillor Harris. If you'll introduce yourself first and then do your presentation. Yeah, my, my name is uh, Steve Jeremy. I'm the chair at Wave Hub and also the, the um, active. Um, and I'll be very quick. Um, Wave Hub's uh, business plan uh, was signed off by the council in March. To, for uh, councillors to recall, uh, the focus was to shift from wave energy to floating offshore wind energy, which is a market which is moving like a train. Um, the three objectives which were set for me by within the business plan were to minimise the council's liabilities on the assets to maximise the chance that we will build out this industry in floating offshore wind in the Cornish waters. Uh, and last but, but last in order of priority was to maximise shareholder value from, from the assets. Um, on the basis of that, we uh, recommended at the board level, which is a new board uh, comprised of offshore renewable energy professionals from across the sector, that the best approach was to sell the assets. Uh, the reason was not that they were stranded assets, but rather that better suited the council's objectives and also better suited those of the likely purchasers who want to control the assets. Uh, we started the sale um, process by securing KPMG as our agents in May. Um, we're now into the end of the pre-market phase. That pre-market phase shows that there is uh, interest in the assets, indeed wide interest from uh, a range of different purchasers. Uh, somewhere between 10 and 20, I think, will be the final number. Uh, but they range as far, far away as from Japan. Um, we plan to issue the information memorandum for the assets uh, by midday Monday. That will be done by our, our agents, and then we're on track at that um, level, that time for a sale by the end of uh, 2020. Uh, the proceeds, proceeds will be reinvested into the sector, as was uh, agreed by Cabinet in March. Um, 
to support the sale. We're in the middle of a uh, gaining section 36 consent for um, floating offshore wind at Wave Hub. Uh, I'd like to thank Councillor Alvi for his uh, support for us in that, and that we now have only one objection, having had three to that consent. There's only one objection, and that's with the MOD, and we're, uh, we, I think, are quite close to having uh, a way forward on that. Um, in parallel, we've um, responded to a contract difference um, um, consultation from Bayes, uh, and that Bayes, uh, that is actually, um, if successful, it would mean that the site had um, a contract for difference for auction round four, which is the auction round which allocates these monies, that would be in 2021. That is Sorry, can I interrupt you there, because you're just yeah. talking about contracts for difference and sites and bays. Yeah. Could, could you put that in plainer English for yeah. the benefit of most of us? Revenue support. So um, when you have new technologies uh, in the energy sector, they need um, a level of revenue support. And then once they're uh, up and running, for example, like um, offshore wind is currently cost uh, £45 a megawatt hour. That's below um, the market price, whereas some of the modern, more new innovative technologies require more and they get support from government to do that. So essentially, Council Harris, it's revenue support. So it's a level of revenue support which will be associated with the site. And again, all, it's the same with all new innovative technologies. Um, so um, the last bit we've got to do is clean up the site before the sale and we have to remove some anchor blocks there from a previous um, uh, a previous wave energy demonstration. Um, assuming we have a successful sale, uh, then the next focus for the company will be th in three areas. Firstly, we uh, will offer to the purchaser a delivery service agreement that will be um, fee earning and will allow the purchaser to gain from the um, strengths that we have on the team, uh, whilst uh, keeping the um, arm's length re relationship between us and the uh, purchaser. We'll uh, be looking to accelerate floating offshore wind. It's a massive market, and if we can get three gigawatts in the Celtic Sea by 2030, that's something somewhere in the order of 15 billion into the region in terms of inward investment. And last but not least, we've won a large uh, national competition. I can't say what that competition is because it hasn't been announced, but it will allow us to develop something called the Southwest Floating Offshore Wind Accelerator. And I hope the news of that will go uh, live in the next. The financials go within budget for 2021. Um, we have a couple of specific issues. We're slightly over budget for the sale. Uh, we're over by about 25,000 for the sale, but 100,000 of the sale is actually success based, so we're, we're likely to be within the, the, the budget as such. Uh, and that we have a decommissioning task to undertake, which is to take the anchor blocks out. That's going to be about £150,000, £155,000. That will be um, come from within decommissioning funds, which were given to a 